Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Ticket. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing 25 plus tips, tricks, and features for your brand new and shiny iPhone 12. So let's dive in and get started. Let's maximize your ownership. Now, the first thing I'm gonna talk about has to do with the basic navigation tactics in case you're brand new to the iPhone scene. So basically, if you launch an application, let me go over here, let me just launch an application. If you wanna go home, you just swipe up from the bottom, okay, dumps you into the home screen. And again, if I launch it again, and if I just wanna bring it up and look at my other applications, I can switch between them just like this, and I can individually swipe up and kill individual applications as you just saw. If you wanna switch from application to application, basically you pull this up, the applications come up, you choose the one you want, you go inside. Now here's a little trick. At the bottom we have a bar, there's a line here. You can use that line to switch to the next application just like this by swiping to the left or right. Those are just the basics of navigation. Now people still miss the home button on their smartphones, but that's gone but you can actually re-enable that if you so desire. All you do, if you want a virtual home button, and I'm gonna show you what that does, if you go to settings, okay, and basically to go home, you swipe up. But what if you just wanna click a button to go home? You can do that. So what you do is you go into accessibility, you go into touch, and then you go over to assistive touch. You tap on this one, you enable it, and suddenly we have a button here. This button, you can press it, and you, it will, it's gonna expand to give you options. You can tap home to go home or tap it again. Uh, bring down the notifications panel. It's all gonna be up to you. The button itself is also gonna be customizable when you come here. And one cool thing is you can choose what happens at a single tap, double tap, or a long press on this one button, which means it gives you three options. This Just this button right here. So if I go over here, I can say home. So now when I double tap this, it will go home. So that is a virtual button. You can put it anywhere that you want. Some people like to keep it right here where it used to be in the past. So fantastic little feature. If you don't need it, just keep it off, no problem. And make sure under the same menu, you have tap to wake enabled, tap to wake. So if my phone is turned off, I tap it to wake it up. If I don't have that option, it's not gonna wake up the phone. Let me disable that. If I go back out, if I tap, nothing happens, okay? So tap to wake. And one more very important thing you wanna do with your iPhone is you wanna go to your settings. This is something you just have to do in the very beginning. You wanna go into your settings, you wanna go into your Apple card right over here, and then simply go into iCloud. Once you're in the iCloud, you wanna scroll down just a little bit, then go inside iCloud Backup, okay? And make sure iCloud, iCloud Backup is in fact enabled because if you don't have this enabled and if something happens to your phone, all your data is gonna be lost. But if you have the iCloud Backup enabled, you are able to restore your phone after it is fixed or you get a brand new one. And of course, I hope nothing happens to your phone but it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, one more very important thing while you're in here is you wanna tap on manage storage, okay? You wanna tap on manage storage, and by default, you do get five gigabytes of free storage, but you can tap on the change storage plan, and that's gonna allow you to purchase additional storage if you need so. Now, in my case, as you can see, I have the current 50 gigabyte plan. That's a dollar a month, not that much but you can downgrade by default. Uh, let me just cancel that. By default, you get five gigabytes. You can go to 200 or two terabytes if you so desire. All right, let's move on. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with your control center that's on the top, on the right. So you pull it down, it shows up. I just wanna let you know that every single button here, just about every button, you can press and hold and it's gonna expand to give you additional options. And even further, I can press and hold on the Wi-Fi and that's gonna expand even further, okay? So you can actually access your settings without having to go into the actual settings screen and just go right from here on the top. Press and hold, you get the expansion, dark mode, nice shift, true tone, 
all at the bottom here if you so desire. I'm also going to show you how to customize the control center in a minute. But one thing I want you guys to notice is when you pull this thing down and you go into the brightness slider, when you switch on the dark mode, what you do get is your background wallpaper also reacts to the dark mode and you get a darker background in addition to having dark background in the settings and certain applications. So just keep that in mind. Let's tap this one. It's going to be easy on the eyes. Now let's quickly talk about the notifications. You have a good grip on what's happening with the notifications. So I'm going to pull this down. We have a bunch of notifications here. Every notification can be slid over and it gives you a bunch of additional options. You can clear the notification individually or if I swipe over, I can tap on view to see the actual notification in detail. Okay, and additionally, I can swipe again. I can tap on manage and that's going to allow me to turn off the notifications for a certain application that is bothersome or at least deliver them quietly so the phone doesn't beep every time I get a notification from that particular application. In this case, it's the wallet application. All right. So again, over here, we have the Netflix. I can do the same thing here. If I tap on manage, I get those options and I can even go into the settings to further customize the notifications for the Netflix application. And I have all these options. I can kill the sound. I can disable the badges and I can even disable the notification for a given application right from here. All right. So that's one way to manage your notifications. You can always go into the settings, go into notifications and individually tweak any notification you please for any application that you please, as you can see. Or here's just one more example with the messages application. All right, let's move on. If you want to take a screenshot of your iPhone of any screen, the combination is the side key, the power button, and of course the volume up key. So if I go like this, it takes a screenshot that stays here. You can swipe it away and it just gets saved. Or if I take it one more time, I can tap on it and it's going to expand and give me additional options to edit my screenshot before I can save it or send it to somebody. I can share it from here if I want to, or I can just tap on done and that's going to save it or I can just delete it right from here. Now, one thing I really like with the screenshot feature is if I do take it and if I go over here, uh, there's a ruler here that I can use to write straight things and I can rotate this ruler with two fingers as you can see. So let's say I want to draw a straight line. Now I get a pen. Let me just pick a color here. Let's just stick to black actually. All right. So now when I go like this, if I move the ruler, you'll see that black line right there and I can do as many as I want. That's a really nice virtual ruler you can use uh, on the screenshot or even when you go in and edit your photos. So fantastic little feature. Let's move on. So let's say you want to actually record the screen of your smartphone. So I'm moving around. Let's say I want to record something and send it to my uh, friend to show him how to do something. All you do is you pull down the control panel and you look for the record symbol. If it's not there, okay, you go to your settings. Let me go back to the main screen, main settings, go to the control center here and make sure the screen recorder, you just click on plus is enabled. Now it's going to show up right there. Now, when I go back out and pull this down, there's the screen recording option. If you press and hold, it gives you additional options. I can start the recording. It does a countdown. All right, there we go. The recording is on. You can turn on or off the microphone. If you want to record your voice, if you want to give instructions, but again, now the screen is being recorded. You can see on the top, we have a red blinking light here. Okay. When I'm done recording the screen and showing what I want to show on the phone, I tap on that button right here and just tap on stop. And the screen recording has been saved to my photos. Now, if I go back inside, I'm replaying that right here. Pause, play. Okay. So I just recorded the whole screen. Again, a great way to share instructions with a friend or ask a question to somebody to help you out. Now, your iPhone 12 comes with a set of powerful cameras, especially when it comes to video recording. So what you can do is when you launch your camera and when you go over to the video mode on the top corner on the, on the over here, you'll see it says 4k at 60. So that's 4k recording 60 frames per second. You can tap it again. It switches to 1080p, which is HD at 60. And if I tap it again, 4k 60, tap it again, HD 60. So you can tap here 
to switch between different formats. Now, here's the funny part. If I tap on HD, it changes that portion. If I tap on the number, the 60, it switches from 30 to 60 frames. So both of these numbers here are in fact clickable on both sides. And this green light here, the green dot, don't let that scare you. That simply means your phone is currently using the video and the microphone. So when I exit, the green light disappears. Anytime you see that green light, it means the microphone or the video is in fact active, all right. Now in the past, all your applications were dumped to the home screen, but Apple cleaned up their mess a little bit. So now all you do is you swipe all the way to the end and what you have is app library and you have folders that aggregate everything together under a folder. For example, we have the utilities. If I, right here, I have four applications. Every folder is gonna have four applications plus it might have one more folder. So here we have three applications and we have one folder. I can access all my utilities right here. That's recently added four applications. All this happens automatically, but if you wanna search your applications, you can search right from here or go through the full list right here. Okay, nice and clean. Because you wanna to go to your settings, okay, and then you wanna immediately go over to your battery right over here. You tap on this one and then go into the battery health. You tap on this one and you wanna make sure that the maximum capacity for your battery is in fact at 100%. If this is any lower than 100%, when you buy a brand new phone, it's time to do a quick exchange because you can read the description at the bottom here. It says, this is a measure of battery capacity relative to when it was new. So it definitely should be 100% when you first buy the phone. Another thing you wanna make sure that you enable is the optimized battery charging. Now this is gonna optimize the battery charging so the battery gets minimum wear and tear from constantly charging the phone. Now if you disable this, the phone might charge a little bit faster than usual, but if you keep it enabled, you might get slightly slower charging, but a longer battery life, especially if you're thinking of keeping your iPhone for a long time. All right, let's move on to the next thing to do. All right, so the next thing you wanna do quickly is go to the settings and then scroll down and go into display and brightness. And you wanna make sure you wanna scroll down, go into auto lock and make sure you set this to 30 seconds. So what basically happens is after 30 seconds of inactivity, the display is gonna shut off automatically and that's gonna save you tons of battery life. If you have it at five minutes, believe me, that battery is gonna drain fast because display eats a lot of battery life. So keep this at 30 seconds and you'll be good to go. You're gonna maximize your battery experience. I'm gonna keep it at five minutes for now for the sake of the video. Now with iOS 14 on these iPhones, what you get is you get a bunch of widgets. So make sure that you utilize these and put the ones that you wanna see on your home screen. All you have to do is press and hold on a blank area on the screen. It's gonna to start to wiggle the screen. You wanna tap on plus right here and you get access to all your widgets right over here. Now every widget has four or five different variations. You can tap on the battery and that's gonna give you a bunch of different widget sizes and stuff like that. Then you can hold it and drag it to the screen or you can tap on uh, add a widget, it's gonna get dumped into the screen. Now if I go over here and if I tap on plus real quick and if I go down just a little bit, let's just grab this one right here. Let's use this one. I'm gonna grab and drag. I'm gonna dump it right there and we are good to go. Now this battery widget if you have an Apple Watch, an iPad, it's all gonna show up right here in the other circles. And just a side note, you do wanna make sure you go to the App Store and simply search for widgets, okay? This is something for people that like to customize their phone. Just search for widgets and download a widget application such as Widget Smith, which is gonna give you even more options as you can see right here to fully customize your iPhone's home screens. So that's something you wanna do if you want important information staring at you in your face right on the home screen. All right, let's move on. Now back in display settings, there's one more thing I like to enable personally. So I'm in display and brightness settings under main settings. I do wanna go down a little bit and I wanna make sure that my text is bolded. So when you have this disabled, the text is gonna be light and thin. Sometimes it might be hard to see this in daylight. 
So I like to bold it up so that's much more visible as you can see. Now one more thing, even though you don't see the setting here, there's an auto brightness setting that's enabled in your iPhone by default to try and save you battery life. Now I like to control my brightness manually, okay? So here's what you wanna do. You wanna go to the settings, the main settings. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into accessibility, you tap on this one, then you go into display and text size. You tap on that one as well. And then you go all the way down and you wanna make sure this auto brightness here is in fact disabled. Once you do this, you are easily able to control the brightness from the control panel right here. Press and hold, look at that, okay? Much better to have manual control on the actual brightness of your smartphone as opposed to auto adjustments all the time. That might confuse you if you're not aware of what's going on. So disable auto brightness or enable it based on your needs. All right. The next thing I'm gonna talk about has to do your face ID. So I'm assuming you already set up your face ID. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your settings and you wanna configure the face ID so it works at maximum capacity. So let me go inside, dump in my password, and here we are. So what you wanna make sure that you are able to use your Face ID for all these tasks, okay? Make sure it's to unlock your iPhone, which should be default, and then you can make purchases in iTunes and App Store. Uh, you can also make payments with Apple Pay and also autofill passwords with the Face ID system. So make sure that is enabled. And also for further security, you wanna make sure you have both of these attention features enabled. Now this one is gonna require you to give your attention to the Face ID system for it to unlock. So if you're sleeping, somebody can't just grab the phone and put it in your face to unlock it. It's gonna actually require you to be looking at the phone to unlock it, so that makes a lot of sense. Make sure attention features and require attention is in fact enabled for maximum security. Now going back into the Face ID settings, there's one more very important thing to configure. What you wanna do is you wanna scroll all the way down and you wanna make sure you disable all these guys when the phone is locked. So as of now, when your phone is locked, people can access your today's view, your notification center, your control center, and all these options right here that they shouldn't be able to access when you lock the phone. Locking the phone means no access. So take a look at this. So if I turn off the phone, just I'm gonna give you one example. I'm just gonna to go to my lock screen over here and I can pull down the panel here. And then from here, I can actually mess up things in the house. I can turn on and off the lights. I can change the brightness, the volume, play music. So you wanna disable these things when you lock your phone and walk away. So let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna disable all these guys and see what happens on the lock screen now. Okay, so everything is disabled. Phone is fully secured. Turn off, turn on. Let's say somebody's trying to access my home settings. Can't do it, okay? Can't access my notifications. Can't access today's screen. Cannot access nothing the way it's supposed to be. So make sure that is configured properly based on your needs. Now one more thing I want you guys to do is go to the settings, okay? And then go into sounds and haptics. Now this is a trick here to save you some battery life. So every time somebody calls you, your phone can ring and vibrate. What you wanna do is you wanna disable the ring option so if you the phone is actually ringing, it doesn't vibrate and that's gonna save you extra battery life because vibration requires a lot of battery power. So you don't need a vibration if you can hear what's happening, okay? If you like it, you can keep it open, but I like to disable this, it's gonna give me 10 to 20 minutes more battery life based on the calls that I get on a daily basis. Now, one of the newer features that people really are gonna enjoy is the picture-in-picture -picture view on iOS 14. So you wanna make sure you go to your settings, okay? And you wanna make sure you go into general and go to picture-in-picture -picture and make sure it is enabled by default, okay? So star pip automatically should be enabled. Let me show you what it does. So let's say you're watching a movie, okay? Sometimes you wanna exit the movie and do something, but you also wanna continue watching the movie. So let me just open the application. I'm just gonna play a movie. Let's say you were playing a movie right over here, okay, in Netflix, and I wanna do something on the home screen. I can exit this guy, and it's gonna actually continue to play right over here. The good thing is you can pinch this to make it bigger, 
as you do other stuff on your phone, okay, check messages, browse the web, research something real quick, and this is right here. You can make it small or large as you desire, as you can see. You can even put it to the side for a minute and do something if you need full screen, and then bring it back up based on your needs. When you're done, you want to go back inside, you can tap this, it'll go back inside, or if you just want to exit out, you close it out and move on. Fantastic little feature. The next thing I want to talk about is very important. It allows you to restrict access to applications and settings on your iPhone so your friends or family members cannot mess up your phone or do things they're not supposed to do. So you want to go to your settings and you want to go to screen time. The first step is you want to go here at the bottom. It says content and privacy restrictions. You go inside and you want to enable this. When you enable this for the very first time, it may ask you to pick a passcode, which is fine. That's going to be a separate, unique passcode, different from your regular PIN number. As you can see, it shows right here, use screen time passcode. So if I tap on this one, it's going to ask me to set one up. So let me just pick something simple. Let's just do 777 for this video. Okay, now dump in your Apple ID to create a recovery in case you forget that because it's important and then it's enabled. So I'm going to go back in here. Okay, right now this is enabled. So let me show you all the things you can do here. First and foremost, let's talk about restricting access to applications. I can tap on allowed applications. It's going to ask me to put in my screen time passcode, of course, because only you should be able to change the settings. So from here, I can disable access to all these applications. Nobody can read my mail. Nobody can access my camera. People cannot go to the iTunes store now to purchase stuff and maybe waste your money. And you can also restrict access to your health information, which is supposed to be private, but you get the point. So if I disable all these guys, you'll notice when I go back out, uh, most of those applications just disappeared. There's no mail application. There's no camera application. They cannot access it now. So when you want to go back and re-enable them, you go back inside, you tap on allowed applications, okay? You just tap on here and enable everything as you desire. Now that's number one. The other thing that people complain about a lot is this thing right here, iTunes and App Store. So right now, anybody, if you hand your phone over to somebody and it's unlocked, anybody can install applications delete applications, and also perform in-app purchases, which is going to waste a lot of money if they do that for you. So first and foremost, always require a password to install an application. And also, if you don't want people to download and install applications, you can don't allow this, okay? Now when I go back, the App Store is actually hidden, so people cannot go to the App Store and install applications. But if you want to keep that one enabled, that's fine. Okay, let's say you want to keep that one enabled. At least what you can do is you can disallow people from making in-app purchases on existing applications. And also uh, restrict people from deleting applications. So if I say don't allow, if I go back out here, if I press and hold, now none of these applications can be actually deleted. There is no X symbol on it. I can tap here, I can remove it from the home screen but it's not going to allow me to actually delete any application. All right. So fantastic little security feature uh, you want to enable to make sure you are fully protected. Now, obviously, if you have an iPhone, you're going to be accessing your control panel a lot. This thing right here, you can access your music from here. Uh, you can access your quick toggles from here. You can access your brightness slider and volume slider. If you press and hold, they expand. Uh, you want to make sure you fully customize this area so you have everything you need at your fingertips when you want to quickly pull something down and maybe take a photo or whatever. It launches the camera. So go to the settings, okay? Go to the main screen and then go to the notifications right here on the top. And then go over to control center right here. And from here, you can enable or disable the controls you don't want to see. So for example, if I don't want any of these guys, I can remove them, okay? Just let me show you how it looks. Now when I pull this down, all those options at the bottom have disappeared. I can disable the home controls if you don't have any smart home items in here. Also, you can go over here and basically enable everything that you want, anything that you want. You want a flashlight? Useful tool. 
calculator, very useful camera, use it all the time. So now if I pull this down, I've got those right here. So make sure this is customized to perfectly fit your needs as well. Another big thing is if you go to the settings and if you go into the display option, okay, uh, you want to make sure that race to wake is enabled, this option right here. Now normally if I have the phone locked and if I just raise the phone to look at it, nothing happens, okay? The phone remains shut. You have to press the power button to log into it, which I'm doing right now. But if I have the race to wake enabled, all right, now if the phone is turned off, I want to just glance at it without unlocking it. I can just race and it's going to, you know, uh, open up the phone. I can look at it. And if there's nothing going on, I can just put it back and move on. So make sure you enable that raise to wake feature, as you can see, very convenient to have. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys learned a bunch of new things with your new iPhone 12. And hopefully you were able to maximize your ownership. Any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. For now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right?